Ystävämme aaltolaiset ja kaikki aallon ystävät. All of you, either watching this live stream from the comfort of your sofa at the office, in one of the screening studios or from wherever you are. Welcome to All the Day One, the opening of our new academic year. Oh, okay. äh, lämpimästi tervetuloa avaamaan uusi lukuvuosi minunkin puolestani. Today we will hear greetings from the president of Aalto University as well as the student union AYY. Later we will reveal the newly appointed Aalto distinguished professor. Near the end of the show we will celebrate achievements of our faculty, staff and students. Uh, the visualizations throughout the show are based on photographs taken from around Aalto as seen through a kaleidoscope. My name is Laura Nikola and I'm studying information and service management in the School of Business. My name is Jason Selvarajan and I'm studying creative sustainability in the School of Chemistry. Laura, how do you feel about the new semester and do you have a learning goal for it? Thanks for asking. I'm feeling excited and happy of returning to campus, seeing lots of new and familiar faces as well, and returning to my studies as well. About my learning goal, I would say it's related to working uh, on my master's thesis and applying all the things I've learned during my studies as the thesis proceeds. Okay, that sounds like a great plan. Myself, I hope to get into more labs and workshops this year. I really like making things and learning how to use new tools. I also hope to see lots of cool projects coming out of Space 21, where I'm the coordinator. Sounds very good to me. Uh, speaking of learning and encounters, I am happy to say that our campus offers pretty nice surroundings and facilities for both. Today, we're actually greeting you live here in our Otaniemi campus. This is the drawing atelier in the undergraduate center. Uh, we'd really like to connect to the whole Aalto community, uh, so please take part in our virtual event. Send greetings to your friends and colleagues and even ask a question from the new Aalto distinguished professor who will be meeting later during this ceremony. Today, we're not only celebrating the new academic year, but we're welcoming all the new first year students as well. Our community has grown by 3,500 of you, and now you're embarking on your Aalto journey. Congratulations and welcome. Uh, remember to embrace endless learning opportunities, take a chance and explore the world outside the classroom as well. Laura and I are really looking forward to today's program. We're going to meet Otto Usvajarvi, the chair of the Aalto University Student Union Board, who will share his thoughts about the new semester. But now, we'll start with the opening words by Ilkka Niemela, the president of Aalto University. Please, Ilkka, the stage is yours. Hello everyone. Hey Allah. Hey kaikille. I want to wish you all a warm welcome to day one. As we start a new academic year, the 13th year of Aalto University, I want to say a special hello to the heart of our community, our students. Whether you're participating for the first time or soon finishing your studies, I'm so glad to have you fellow Altonians. Join us today. This is actually the sixth time that I have the pleasure of opening the academic year, as I'm now starting my second term as president of Aalto University. Together, we have seen so much. Otaniemi campus has developed uh, tremendously over last years with the metro line unveiled in 2017 and since then new landmark buildings going up. All fields of our university now call Aalto home. 
When the COVID-19 pandemic first hit in spring 2020, we went through a comprehensive shift to hybrid work and studies in a record time. And as we were finally transitioning out of the pandemic last winter, Russia's invasion of Ukraine shocked us all. I'm so proud how Altonians have handled such big changes and turbulences. I want to take this moment and thank you all warmly for your excellent work and commitment to our community. Now, I'm also happy to see our spirit strengthening again as we return to our beloved campus. While the shared space is important for many reasons, let me be very clear. At Aalto, we see the value of coming together on campus and want, we want to do our best to support it. We have a large responsibility to support our students and help them get a firm handle on their studies. We also need to help them build their networks in the Alta community and beyond. Of course, we must recognize that our ways of working have indeed changed in some ways. Mixing in-person and online work and study is the present and future. Moving forward, I want to make sure that we both recognize and take advantage of the best of both worlds. Oli tärkeää, että hallitus jatkoi viime viikolla annetussa vuoden 2023 budjettiesityksessään panostuksia tutkimus- ja kehittämistoimintaan ja koulutukseen. Tavoitteena on nostaa TKI-menot 4 prosenttiin suhteessa bruttokansantuotteeseen vuoteen 2030 mennessä. Tämä on oikea suunta, mutta tavoitteen toteutuminen vaatii seuraavaltakin hallitukselta tuntuvia lisäpanostuksia. Edessä on dramaattisia muutoksia, kun haemme ratkaisuja ihmiskunnan isoihin kestävyyshaasteisiin, erityisesti ilmastonmuutokseen ja luontokatoon. Keskeistä on kohdentaa julkiset TKI-panostukset kestävään kehitykseen. Ne on kohdistettava niin, että ne vivuttavat merkittävästi yksityisiä panostuksia, koska suurin osa TKI-investoinneista tulee kuitenkin yrityksiltä. Tutkimus- ja kehittämistoiminta vaatii korkeatasoista osaamista ja osaajia. Matka kohti 4 prosentin tavoitetta nostaa TKI-investointien määrää useilla sadoilla miljoonilla euroilla vuosittain, mistä arviolta yli puolet on asiantuntijatyötä. Tämä tarkoittaa, että tarvitsemme tulevaisuudessa merkittävän määrän uusia tekijöitä. Kestävyyshaasteiden, kestävän kasvun ja siihen tarvittavien TKI-investointien keskeisin pullonkaula on siis itse asiassa osaajien ja osaamisen saatavuus. Ja paras tapa ratkaista tämä haaste on panostukset yliopistoihin. Niillä on tärkeä kaksoisvaikutus. Toisaalta syntyy uutta osaamista ja tutkimustuloksia ja keksintöjä kestävien innovaatioiden pohjaksi ja samalla kipeästi tarvittavia uusia osaajia. Miten siis vauhditamme kestävää kehitystä turvaamme kansainvälisen kilpailukykymme ja pidämme huolta kansalaisistamme. Tarvitsemme kansainvälisesti houkuttelevia osaamiskeskittymiä, jotka vetävät puoleensa uusia osaajia ja investointeja myös kansainvälisiltä yrityksiltä aivan uudessa mittakaavassa. Osaajapulan hoitamiseen tarvitsemme pitkäjänteistä panostusta nuorten laadukkaaseen tutkintokoulutukseen. Hallituksen tavoite saada vähintään puolelle nuorista aikuisista korkeakoulututkinto on oikean suuntainen. Lisäykset on suunnattava aloille ja alueille, joilla on pitkän ajan koulutustarpeita ja vahvaa kysyntää. Euroopan komission viimeisimmän maaraportin mukaan erityisesti Uudenmaan alueella on merkittävä puute korkeakoulutuksen aloituspaikoista. Tarvitsemme myös uutta ajattelua ja resursseja vahvistamaan merkittävästi työelämässä jo olevien jatkuvaa oppimista 
ilman, että leikkaamme nuorten tutkintokoulutuksesta. Olemme Aalto-yliopistossa puolestamme valmiita ottamaan nämä haasteet vastaan, ja teemme jo paljon. Kannamme entistä laajempaa yhteiskunnallista vastuuta avainalojemme tutkintokoulutuksesta ja jatkuvasta oppimisesta. Vidaldo hade redan uppstått ett internationellt betydande kompetenskluster som genuint konkurrerar med ledande innovationsekosystem i exempelvis Sverige, Danmark, Baltikum och Tyskland. Det här klustret lockar till sig experter, investerare och samarbetspartners. Att bygga en hållbar framtid kräver dock långsiktig finansiering. En investering i universiteten är en investering i framtiden. Fellow Altonians, one of the things that I appreciate most about our community is our diversity. It's a strength we must cherish. At Alto, we believe in reaching across borders, not building walls. It is open global collaboration that makes research and education strong. It also acts as a strong current against destructive political polarization. We need to remember that just as Aalto needs top talent, so does Finland. This country, our university, need to be the kind of places where everyone feels that they belong. We need to not just attract, but retain the people that can find the solutions the world needs. Now, we all know that the last few years have tested the systems and people of the, our planet, but we also need to be realistic about what lies ahead. It may not be a smooth ride. We already know that energy supplies may be tricky this winter across Europe, inflation rates are high, and there's a real possibility of economically challenging times. The war in Ukraine may evolve as well. Make no mistake, despite all the recent turbulence, big global challenges have not disappeared. Our work to shape a sustainable future is more important than ever. What recent times have shown is that we have the culture, values and stamina to deal with prickly problems. Dear friends, let's not allow current uncertainties to make us blind to future opportunities. The challenges we face aren't just threats. They can force us to rethink the fundamentals and they can drive transformative shifts. As Altonians, we have the tools and insight needed to find sustainable solutions. Let's go out and seize those future opportunities together. Next up, we will hear the voice of our students, represented by Otto Usvajavi, the chair of the board of Aalto University Student Union, AYY. Otto will share us his thoughts of the upcoming academic year. Otto, ole hyvä. Hei Aalto-yhteisö! Tervetuloa Aaltoon ja hyvää lukuvuoden alkua, uudet ja vanhat opiskelijat. Tahdon toivottaa niille teistä, jotka aloittavat tänä vuonna opintoonsa Aallossa, valtavasti onnea opiskelupaikan johdosta. Seuraavat vuodet tulevat olemaan teille oppimisen ja kehittymisen aikaa. Yliopistossa ja opiskelijayhteisössä vietet vuodet 
tulevat olemaan ikimuistaisia. The years spent studying are a busy time filled with possi- possibilities. The possibility to find lifelong friends, a passion for your career, or even a partner. This time of life carries with it a lot of expectations. With expectations comes pressure. Pressure to do well in your studies and simultaneously get to experience all the great things that past generations of students always talk about. Muistakaa kuitenkin, että jokaisen opiskelijan reitti on uniikki. Se mitä muut tekevät tai ehkä jopa kertovat, että teidän tulisi tehdä, ei välttämättä ole se itselle, itselle oikea polku. Opiskelijoiden ainut tehtävä ei ole opiskella. Näistä vuosista on tarkoitus nauttia. Vaikka opintoihin tuleekin suhtautua vakavasti, harrastukset, opiskelijayhteisön toimintaa osallistuminen ja muu vapaa-ajan toiminta on tärkeä osa opiskelijan arkea. När du tänker på allt du kan göra under dina studier kan det verka som en omöjlig ekvation att balansera alla aspekter av ditt studielivet. Jag vill uppmuntra er att genomföra era studier och delta i resten av studielivet precis i den takt ni känner att passar er. Jag vet att nya studeranden är under mer press varje år. Men det är helt okej okay att sakta ner när du känner för det. Tahdon toivottaa myös vanhemmat opiskelijat tervetulleeksi takaisin Aaltoon. Orientation week and the beginning of a new academic year are an inspiring time. The possibilities of a new semester bring an excitement to our everyday lives. New students fill the campus and the excitement for new things to come is contagious. Viime vuosina ilmassa on kuitenkin häilynyt myös ikävämpiä tunteita. Jännitys ja epävarmuus siitä, mitä nurkan takana odottaa. Turhautuminen siihen, että odotettuja kohtaamisia ja lukuvuoden aloitusta ei ole voitu täysimääräisenä toteuttaa. Pettymyksiä siihen, että pitkään odotettu yliopistoelämä alkaa eristyksissä omassa asunnossa. Yliopistoyhteisö on kokenut kovia viimeisen muutaman vuoden aikana. Koko yhteisö teki parhaansa ja suoriutui yllättävistä olosuhteista erinomaisesti. Tästä huolimatta äkillinen pandemiasta johtuva muutos yhteiskunnan ilmapiirissä oli kova isku, varsinkin opintoja aloitteleville opiskelijoille. Useat näistä opiskelijoista joutuivat selviämään uudessa ympäristössä ilman normaalisti opiskeluaikoihin kuuluvaa tukiverkkoa. Epävarmuudet ja vaikeat ajat eivät ole ohi. Mutta historia on osoittanut, että yliopistoyhteisöistä löytyy voimaa ja ymmärrystä selvitä näistä vaikeista ajoista. Aallossa autetaan kavereita ja apua tarvitsevia. Täällä kaikki hyväksytään mukaan ja kaikkien panosta tarvitaan. Vaikka nykyaikana yksilön merkitys on korostunut, eivät yhteisöt ja niiden voima ole kadonneet minnekään. Päinvastoin, aalto on yhteisö, johon jokainen teistä nyt kuuluu. Mä toivon, että jokainen teistä voi myös olla ylpeä tästä yhteisöstä. Empathy 
friendship and open communication are needed now more than ever. Let's be there for each other. Let's enjoy each other's company and grow together. Let's meet new people with open minds and open hearts and bring new people in our circle of friends. Hopefully the new academic year brings us all some unforgettable experiences and feelings of success. Happy beginning of the academic year. Kiitos Otto. We will continue by hearing from one of the bold thinkers from Aalto. Traditionally in the ceremony, the new Aalto Distinguished Professor has inspired us with their Aalto talk. This year's Aalto talk is given by a nationally and internationally recognized innovative researcher. He has more than 420 publications which have been cited over 12,000 times. He's also a distinguished educator who gets excited by his passionate and talented students. He has supervised more than 40 doctoral dis dissertations. An impressive feat. The new Aalto Distinguished Professor is Jukka Seppälä from the School of Chemical Engineering. Jukka, Ilkka, welcome. Minulla on ilo ja kunnia luovuttaa tämä diplomi Aalto-professorin nimityksen merkiksi professori Jukka Seppälälle, joka työskentelee kemian tekniikan korkeakoulussa, kemian tekniikan ja metallurgian laitoksella. Professor Seppälä is a nationally and internationally recognized innovative researcher of polymer chemistry and engineering. He has been among the early researchers to study sustainable solutions in the field. This includes development of closed and circular polymer processes, use of renewable raw materials and research on biodegradable polymers. Professor Seppälä has always been looking for impact in research. He actively seeks opportunities to utilize research in practical applications and by companies for the benefit of, so of society. He has been one of the inventors in more than 50 inventions and patent families. Aalto Distinguished Professor Jukka Seppala, warm congratulations. Thank you, Jukka. For all of you following this ceremony live on the virtual event platform, please send your questions to Jukka during his talk. We will have a chat afterwards and ask him your most interesting questions. Jukka will talk about polymers as the keys to sustainability and the power of passion. This is his all the talk. Please, Jukka, go ahead. An inspiring teacher can ignite the spark that turns a student into a scientist, into someone who wants to understand our world and find ways to improve it. It was in high school that I found chemistry. In Anja Havista's class at Munkwuri High School, and especially in her evening club, Nitro, I learned about chemistry's role in the environment and in our everyday lives. In fact, high school, was where I did my first chemistry research project. I analyzed the inorganic substances in a mushroom species using very classical reactions. I was still a young student, but I had already learned how fundamental chemistry is and seen its potential. 
Those experiences fueled an excitement that only grew when I went to university. I began to see more of how chemistry and chemical engineering are connected to living nature. They can provide solutions we need for sustainability and to create welfare in society. I'm no longer a young student, but I'm still excited by these possibilities. In fact, as an experienced professor of polymer technology, I'm even more excited. Between ongoing research and my industrial background and collaborations, I see how chemistry and chemical engineering are truly the keys to the three great transitions towards sustainability. Moving from fossil-based fuels and materials to bio-based ones, transforming from linear to circular systems, and building new materials using green electricity. Clean energy from sources like wind and solar power will enable production of hydrogen from water that can be used to produce materials without relying on fossil sources. In the future, materials should and can be CO2 neutral or even sinks rather than emitting carbon dioxide. These three transitions are not just necessary. They are also already underway and polymer science plays a vital role in those. Polymers are large molecules built from a combination of subunits called monomeric molecules. It's a bit like assembling legal blocks together to form specific structures. Polymers are also an essential part of all living organisms. Uh, they are an important part of our technology from materials used in everyday life to highly advanced functional materials like in electronics or in medical uses, as examples. Because of their size and structure, polymers can provide a huge range of different functionalities. Life on Earth has produced an enormous diversity of polymers. So far, we chemists and engineers can manage only a fraction of the structures and functions that nature has. The potential is there. Biopolymers, which are one of my main areas of research, play a role in moving away from fossil feedstocks as well towards circular systems. Biopolymers are based on renewable feedstocks. They can be based on cellulose, lactic acids, or biofats and oils, just to mention some examples. At the end of their life cycle, they can be designed to biodegrade. Biodegradation can take place within the desired time frame or under specific conditions, such as in composting or out in nature. Biopolymers are also about health and welfare. In my lab, we have designed new polymer materials for medical and pharmaceutical uses. Since we can control how polymers degrade, Surgical biomaterials can be designed to be safely resorbed in the human body. Bioactive medical polymers can release pharmaceutical agents or even help tissues regenerate and heal. Some of the biopolymers that we have recently researched and developed show antimicrobial properties. They are antibacterial and some of them are even antiviral. In some ways, my research is like a polymer. <laughs> it combines different components into a larger whole. With its own powerful properties, it helps to create the transitions we need. My work has always been highly interdisciplinary, crossing borders and bringing together people with uh, complementary skills. This has been absolutely necessary in the research like of medical and pharmaceutical polymers. Over my career, I have been excited to work with excellent collaborators and passionate, talented students. Our discoveries have come from the hard work and diverse backgrounds of many researchers. But interdisciplinarity is 
more than just combining different research fields. The potential of polymers won't be realized by research alone. Our scientific work goes hand in hand with inventions and industrial innovations. For me, it is highly motivating to refine scientific discoveries to innovations, new technologies and products to improve our society and make our lives better. I see the same motivation in my colleagues and especially in young students and researchers. I'm grateful and honored to be appointed an Alto Distinguished Professor. But I'm even more grateful for what Alto offers, for the opportunity to carry out world-class research and teaching. I feel lucky that I get to coach students as they learn and to innovate with them, passing forward the spark that was ignited in me by an inspirational teacher years ago. Thank you. Jukka, onnittelut vielä upeasta saavutuksestasi ja kiitos innostavasta puheesta. Kiitos, Jason. Uh, you mentioned during your talk how a teacher can ignite a spark, so there's definitely joy present when getting a new insight, and you've certainly passed on your knowledge as well. We are curious, what is your latest personal learning experience? P learning experience is it's part of... Uh, uh, experiencing it's part of experiments in in laboratory hands-on learning mm, it's also very much about finding uh, suitable uh, feasible problems to tackle to work with to try to do chemistry for and to find solutions that are significant maybe that is that inspires not only the teacher uh, but especially, of course, the young students that we uh, collaborate with. Okay, so the, the um, research questions kind of inspire you to look forward and keep digging further? Absolutely. We, of course, all want to find solutions that, that improve the welfare and uh, so sustainability. Uh, there, we, we urgently need better solutions and 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 that th from there comes the motivation and 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 passion to mm. to work for uh that's that's great you also uh talked about the importance of turning discoveries into innovations and alto has a strong tradition of entrepreneurship and industry collaboration um how have such collaborations affected your research Alto is uh, in front line and, and uh, to, to support mechanisms for towards innovations uh, are, are excellent. Um, in, in our research, again said the, the relevant problem setting is the starting point. Mm. For that we do basic research, but uh, of course, uh, like for example already Albert Einstein said, in theory, theory and practice are the same. In practice, they are not. In other words, we meet uh, additional new challenges in bringing uh, inventions and scientific outcomes to true innovations that benefit the society or, or uh, industrial uh, like, like production. Uh, but, but these are very challenging processes mm -hmm. and rewarding processes, especially when, when we finally find that uh, the, we can, we can uh, solve the challenges and, and find those solutions that finally lead to impact in the society. That's Good. great. Thank you, Jukka, for your insightful answers. And thank you, Jukka and Jason, and all of you in the audience who have uh, been sending us a few questions, actually. So we have received a couple of great questions in the chat and I'm going to read the first of them. Mm -hmm. So, Jukka, how would you inspire young students to study chemistry? I would 
encourage them uh, to, to I experience and see what the role of chemistry has in finding solutions to, to create challenges mm. for welfare, like in healthcare or pharmaceutical agents that, that, that I mentioned in the lecture, but also to find solutions to solve environmental big issues. Chemistry and chemical engineering truly are the keys to, mm. uh, to, to, to find solutions. Uh, also, the knowledge of chemistry is uh, ne very much needed to understand where we are to assess different options uh, like uh, feasibility f towards the solutions. Uh, that is maybe so. I personally have tried to form vision towards future. Maybe young people should do the same. The vision that, that they could commit with, in this case, uh, combining with chemistry and chemical engineering. Mm. I definitely agree on that one. Uh, we have also received another question uh, concerning uh, that how do you collaborate with other fields and schools at all? Though? And do you have any examples regarding that? Yes, we very much collaborate with other disciplines. Uh, mm, my first very significant uh, like uh, initiative in, in this was in our uh, Center of Excellen Excellence years ago, where we collaborated with uh, several very different fields. In the beginning it was difficult, but finally we found joint language and we made excellent outcomes uh, through uh, like uh, uh, complementary combination of our skills. This is absolutely necessary in fields like uh, developing medical biopolymers or pharm pharmaceutical polymers. There we need absolutely uh, the, the, the collaboration with other disciplines. Today that is uh, very often a must. Yeah, definitely agree on that one as well. Thank you very much for your answers and insights. It is incredible how many sustainability-related projects are coming out of Aalto already. Now, let's take a sneak peek of some of the projects related sustainability presented in the Designing Cooler Planets exhibitions. We are now coming to you from a gallery in Vara building, one of the many exhibition areas in Aalto University. Uh, this year's desi Designs for a Cooler Planet uh, that's being constructed right now, uh, students and researchers ask what Life 1.5 could be, focusing on planet-friendly materials, fashion, and food. Sounds cool indeed. I'm definitely curious to see all the upcoming exhibitions, both on campus and online. We've had a lot of great projects and initiatives going on at Aalto during the last year. On day one, we celebrate our community members and inspiring projects with Aalto Awards. You, dear students, faculty and staff, have made the nominations and President's management team uh, has selected the winners. Soon we'll meet some of the awardees, but remember that there have been many more people involved. Thanks goes to everyone who have been a part of these projects. 
So let's see who these brilliant people are and what they have accomplished. Jason, who is our first winning team? Uh, this year we're giving out not one but two Alder Research Impact Awards. The first award goes to a person that has open-mindedly renewed the field and promoted multidisciplinary cooperation, new knowledge and societal impact. Let's get to know the person who is following a principle dear to all of us, shaping a sustainable future. The global textile industry is highly polluting in terms of both greenhouse gas and wastewater emissions, mainly due to the applied linear business model. It uses large amounts of non-renewable raw materials to produce textile products that are only used for a short time and then mostly end up in landfills or incinerators. It is thus crucial to gradually transform the textile industry into a circular economy. An important element of this transformation is the development of a sustainable fiber spinning system. About 12 years ago, we started developing a sustainable fiber spinning process that was financed by a nationwide funding program. Known as the ion cell process, this fiber process uses renewable raw materials, either wood pulp or cellulosic textile waste, which are converted into sustainable textile fibers of the highest quality. Since then, the ion cell process has been developed in my group alone through seven dissertations and more than 20 master's theses to the point where we have been able to design, build, and install a small pilot plant in which the development of a continuous closed loop ion cell fiber process can be targeted within the next two years by the startup company Ion Cell OE. What makes this ion cell project unique is its interdisciplinarity, expressed in the entire value chain from raw material to finished textile involving two Alto schools, chem and arts, as well as a group of the University of Helsinki through their students and researchers. The next Alta Research Impact Award goes to an initiative that has promoted societal impact and cooperation across fields. Uh, Alta Research Impact Award is granted to a center that strives for groundbreaking new technologies and innovations. Alta University Bioinnovation Center creates new knowledge and innovations to facilitate the transition towards bio and circular economy. We bring together people with diverse backgrounds to ideate and experiment with open minds and ambition. What do we actually do in the Bioinnovation Center? The doctoral school is the heart of our research. We focus on sustainable textiles and packaging in research projects in collaboration with students and professors from all the schools of Aalto. We invest in research infrastructure, we have an impact program, and we are hiring a new professor in the field of sustainable bioproducts innovation. We are very happy about this award. I'd like to mention our Dean, Christina Kuhls, and our Vice President, Janne Leine, who had the vision for this Bioinnovation Center. I also want to thank our steering group. It was their engagement and enthusiasm that has driven the Bioinnovation Center forward. And we are deeply grateful to the Jane and Atos Erko Foundation for their most generous grant. Next up, the All the Education Impact Award goes to two teams that have collaborated to develop the university's teaching and trained new game changers for Finland and for the world. The renewal process started in early 2021 after the teaching and learning evaluation exercise were completed. 
we established a small and agile concept group to develop the competitive plan for a program which could compete with existing ones. We ended up with an adjustment that utilizes existing courses and pedagogical ideas to a large extent, but in some ways is still quite radical, being streamlined all the way from high schools to the MSc programs executed at the departments. The concept was accepted and passed over to the implementation group who took over the task of completing the planning work. We start this year with the new students and we are super excited about that. This process was not the easiest, but the positive and inclusive atmosphere helped a lot. So I'm really proud of that this amazing team gets this recognition. The renewal process started in late 2019 as a community discussion about the future of arts. Quite soon, we realized that we needed to make some significant readjustments. Quality-wise, we were doing great, attracting incredibly talented students from all over the world and with brilliant faculty. But in other areas, we found a few crucial challenges. The significant burnout risks, the imbalance in cohort sizes and long graduation times. The curriculum coordination and renewal team set out on this journey to combine all the knowledge to build a long-term path to solve these challenges. The work included a lot of iteration back and forth, lively discussions and difficult compromises. It was no easy task, especially when the pandemic hit us at the same time. However, I am proud of the results. We now have a renewed and much clearer program portfolio with more symmetry at both the bachelor's and master's levels and with majors in all specific fields of education. We also have renewed this management model for these programs to increase the engagement of the whole community in the future development of our education. The team took on an enormous challenge but I would also like to thank the whole arts community for participating in this process. Your engagement has been fantastic. Thank you. Uh, now we'll give out the All to Success Enabler Award, which goes to two teams that have supported our academic and educational success. Uh, these two teams have had a crucial role in all the university's response to the war in Ukraine, keeping us safe and managing challenging legal and cybersecurity situations. Sanctions imposed on Russia are extensive and they restrict Alto's possibilities to cooperate with any Russian universities or persons affiliated with such universities. Legal has done lots of work to review the sanctions and to communicate their impact on Alto's activities across Alto's organization. Sanctions imposed on Russia are new legislation to all of us. Once again, we learned one of the most important tasks of a lawyer how to turn complex regulation into simple guidelines, even for those who have never heard about sanctions before, and for those whose affairs were personally affected by the sanctions. When making guidelines, it was important to keep the balance between implementing sanctions regulations and considering their impact in practice. This meant putting weight on fundamental rights of the individuals as well as academic principles. How to combine legal resources from different units and study to work. The work still continues. We are an effective team with good skill set and excellent tools. We help and protect the whole outer community. We are here for you. And we all have the same attitude and mindset. Cybersecurity on the terms of research and teaching. Our team spirit is great and we can completely trust each other. Where we are at this moment with cybersecurity is a result of long term hard work, especially with uh, cybersecurity technologies. Cybersecurity is more than a job for us. And hey, hey, hey. let's be careful out there. Then we move on to the Alto Community Award that goes to a collaboration which has truly built a sense of belonging and brought all the people together. This year's award goes to associations who have brought our lovely campus back to life. Now let's meet our lovely students.
student organizations are historically fairly good at adapting to the changes in the circumstances of the world. These past few years and the return to a more open world have been no exception. I can honestly say that I'm incredibly proud of the how the actors in our community have come up with new innovative ways to keep our community together and help each other through the times of change. It's important to realize that just as the changes in the world that forced us to stay at home and avoid contact were difficult to get through, it's also difficult to switch modes back to a world that encourages meeting people and live interaction. All of the people and organizations in our community have been instrumental in facilitating this change all year long. We have to realize that this work is not over, nor is it ever over. In fostering a community where everyone wants to get involved, where they feel free to express themselves and feel safe is difficult and requires active effort from everyone involved. Thanks to the best community in the world, the other community. My hope is that the memories we make during our studies will be the memories of the best time of our lives. Finally, the oldest and most traditional of all our awards, Alta Act of the Year, goes to an action that has made the single biggest difference in Alta University's success in the past year. This year's award goes to Professor Mika Silampa and Assistant Professor Laure Mercier de Lépinay for their groundbreaking work on macroscopic quantum entanglement, which demonstrated a way to get around Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. I would like to say thank you for this uh, recognition. Uh, this work has been about uh, an experiment that has two sides. First is the detection of quantum entanglement between mechanical oscillators. And on the other side, it's also a measurement of a position and a speed, which usually is uh, forbidden. It's impossible to measure too precisely a position and the speed because of the Heisenberg principle. But in this case, it was possible because this is not the position on the speed of a real object. And so in this way, we managed to avoid the uh, Heisenberg principle. I would like to say thank you as well. I'm really humbled by this nice recognition, which I see as a recognition for basic or fundamental research done at Alt or why not everywhere else. And uh, this uh, bottom-up fundamental research, it's not aiming at producing any new technologies. It's aiming at producing knowledge, touching the boundaries of human knowledge. It's a bit like opera. It's not aiming at any very direct benefit. I have been in this research business for quite a few years, and I still learn every day new things. And if this would not happen, I would be quite worried. I think that uh, we, we love making our brains more complicated on a personal level. And it's also very important for society at large that everyone would be learning to keep the voice of reason alive. On behalf of the whole community, congratulations to all the winning teams. Thank you, Otto. Thank you, Ilka. Thank you, Jukka. Uh, we have great news. All the day one makes a much awaited comeback to Alvar Allanpuisto today at three o'clock. Join us as the Alta party begins with its annual tradition, a challenge between the student union AYY and the president's management team. And to add this year, we have a special treat as the Alta Reunion Challenge has been issued to all the students that have started their studies uh, in 2021 or earlier. I hope to see all of you there and thank you very much. But before we say goodbye from the studio and hand over the program to the Alta Party people, it is time to officially open the new academic year. Ilka and Otto. 
would you be so kind and give us the honor? Okay. Onpas mahtavaa olla taas täällä kampuksella viettämässä avajaispäivää ja kuulemassa kaikkia näitä tärkeitä aaltalaisia puheita. Joo, todellakin. Tosi, meillä on todella upea yhteisö. Ja onnittelut ja iso kiitos Otto teille opiskelijoille, kun olette ottaneet kampuksen haltuun ja tuoneet sinne eloa ja toimintaa. Indeed, thank you, Ilka. And uh, what do you say? Would now be a good time to open the academic year officially? Yeah, it is time. Fellow Altonians, I hope that this year brings you many new encounters which enrich your studies and work. With this, it's my great pleasure to declare the new academic year open. Hyvää uutta lukuvuotta. Ja önskareil alla, et riktit kot nyt lesoor.